So what's going on fam? I just wanted to go ahead and actually touch base and get to showing uh, something I'm working on here. I don't really know everything about it, but I'm just trying it out here. Uh, in my front garden, I have uh, something that I arranged with the local uh, guy who cuts the grass next door. And what he does next door is, is he cuts the grass, usually he puts all of the, the grass and clippings in a bag. And so one day I asked him, hey man, do you mind if uh, I get those grass clippings when you're done? And so I did, and he gives them to me in a plastic bag wrapped up. So what I did was I left them in an area that I'm working on building a pot for, um, for here for the next grow. And um, over time, it had leaves from natural falling from the trees on it. So I threw the bags on top. So worms, <clears throat> I want to go lift up the bags to move them around because I put some other stuff there. So what the plastic bags actually did was was create a layer where the worms were just eating under it. And so I was, I was lifting bags and pulling up bags and I'm finding humongous worms, like not just regular ones. And these are the Canadian night crawlers and they're huge. They're literally just sitting inside of a bed full of uh, Pro Mix HP, and the Pro Mix HP has a lot of uh, perlite in it, but it has also it has a lot of uh, peat moss. And so, what happens is, is the worms they'll sit in here and just keep eating the peat moss. And now, I added water into this, and I'll probably put about a gallon in it uh, from the shower, from the shower mister. So, you know, it's not really like heavy, heavy. You, know, you can lift it, but the soil is moist, and it's not super wet, but it's moist. And so the thing about it is, is that I've folded and some layers are getting moist from other places and I'll keep this moist as time permits, but I put uh, some ingredients in here because I was kind of creating just my own living soil um, because I've seen living soil products online. Here's another worm. I literally put about, mm, I found within a 20 or 30 minute span of that setup, probably about 12 or 15, more like 12 big ones and about 15 to 20 little ones. And so I should be able to find worms with the nice handfuls of the soil. I'm just kind of moving them all around. You know, they're all just getting used to the environment, learning it. And so worms will eat that peat moss. They'll just eat it up. And so uh, I put a insect frass uh, in here. I put kelp meal in here and I put kelp meal, insect fries. I would have wanted to put my worm castings in there, but I already have worms, I mean worm castings in the bag. So I really was like, hey, if this is a living soil, how can I make this soil as life possible? Like how much life, you know, I could give it organic matter and then, yeah, life will form and I'm gonna keep this closed. But what will make it really, really living soil and I'm, the only thing that I know how to make it living is to put life in it. And I went outside and got some worms and this is my living soil. This is the soil that I have as a living soil and there's life in it. And each worm will eat its weight, uh, its its size and weight. I believe Canadian night crawlers in a good environment can eat their size and weight every two to three days. Um, it's not a real vermicomposting worm. It's just a worm that's big that's gonna eat and poop and eat and poop and eat and poop. And so everything from the slime that secretes off of their body is a probiotic. Uh, other stuff that's a probiotic with them is the poop. So worm castings is called worm castings, but it's really worm poop. And I put those things, uh, again, I put the insect frass, all from Gaia Green, insect frass, uh, Gaia Green kelp meal, Gaia Green insect frost, worms from my backyard. I would have put fish bone meal in there, but I just didn't. But uh, the purpose of this video was just to show you can create your own little box of living soil. Now, I'll be using uh, cocoa, and I'm working on sourcing, which is the best material, and I'll keep everybody updated on that. But in a regular Tupperware, you can have a big bag of Promix HP, uh, which is 70, you know, I got a 3.8 cubic feet. 
so it's pretty big it's huge uh, it breaks down it's compressed so it is a lot of of uh, beautiful peat moss with uh, uh, pumice uh, in it already sorry not pumice freaking the white things man oh perlite yes perlite peat moss and uh, dolomite lime to their recipe it's a great uh, worm food uh, the worms will eat everything from the mite, from the little pieces of lime to the peat and just keep eating it and turn it into worm poop. So then when I make my mix for my cocoa, for my five gallon pots, I have a, a living soil base <clears throat> that I can use and maintain. Now, I like this, it has air flows on the sides and I probably will cover up some of those, not so many just to keep air in it so it doesn't become inert but this thing breathes it's not it's a lot of airflow it's a little fan behind it that's keeping air flowing in it anyway and also helps keep the bugs off of it there's no bugs in this room um and the big thing about it is is creating your own life inside of a box so i'm creating my own living soil so therefore i don't have to buy somebody's 10 pound bag of living soil for 40 or 50 bucks or 30 bucks um, I can go and spend 40 or 50 bucks on a 50 or 60 pound bag of HP Promix. Get me some local soil. I mean, get me some local worms. Always rinse your worms off in regular water. I did a short on my channel with the worms. They were rinsed off in the rainwater and put into this cup. So always, 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 always rinse off your worms from outside before you bring them inside. Bugs, mites, all types of stuff can get in there. You just want to keep it safe. And you can start this type of box up in your grow space, in your grow room, however you want. Uh, and you can have this set up for the purposes of knowing you have the living soil. And I'm going to add more as time goes by. Oh, yeah, one other thing I put in there was mycorrhizae. I put mycorrhizae in here so I can create those cultures in here because it will be dark, it will be warm, but the mycorrhizae fungi kind of build itself up and then I'll be adding more HP in here and adding it on top and the worms will continually eat. I'll have more water, more, more mycos. So whenever I need that living soil, I don't necessarily need the worms. I can actually filter it, sift it, put the worms back in the bin, use the living soil uh, and the worms will make more worm babies and they'll keep producing life. And I'll use that soil with cocoa, with Gaia Green products to make my mix for my super cocoa for my soil. So this is a soil mix that I'm just showing everybody. Hopefully everybody learned something from it. And I'll see you later. Bless up.